Amen. And to this note, I ain't a furry. Welcome to Reveal Life. I'm D Dub Man, the only registered real one on YouTube, here to talk about cats. I hate cats. Like, a lot. I hate the pheromones they give off lonely women to make them own like eight of them. I hate the fact that they let you pet them for like three seconds before they start attacking you for no reason. And boy, do I hate the fact that you can choke on cat hair at any given moment once you reach the vicinity of where they once were. Get rid of them, eradicate them. Just kill the winter mice under my house and I'll give you some mail mix later. Stay on the porch. But Cat Scratch, on the other hand, I fucks with him. Cat Scratch is one of those shows where you look at the promotional art and you'll go, oh yeah. It's not a cartoon you should go out of your way to remember, but the memory is still there nonetheless. The fondest memory I've had watching it was during Hurricane Katrina where I stayed at my grandma's house until the storm passed through. So basically imagine my eight year old ass in 2005 posted up in the living room like this. Driving is for skilled professionals like me. Big deal, I can wear gloves too. Unfortunately though, that's all I remember about Cat Scratch during his original run until it was eventually on Nicktoons where I watched it loosely. Now we're at today's day, 2020 something. Shit, I don't know why I'm dropping this shit. And wouldn't you figure, current distribution of the show is non-existent. And I usually don't pay any mind to slight stuff like this, but if your show isn't found on any streaming platform at all nowadays, but Chalk Zone is, that's where we know we have a problem. And I'm about to dig deeper. So come with me as we go down this rabbit hole together as I review Nickelodeon's original series, Cat Scratch. <laughs> Alrighty, so picture you rolling in 2003. I'm not sure how old you are, but if you were born after that year, you shouldn't be watching my channel. I talk about porn here. So yeah, for this scenario, I'm gonna talk about what I was doing in mid 2003. And if I wasn't playing WWE Smackdown Shut Your Mouth, I was probably watching my VHS tape of the country bears on repeat because we didn't have cable. But as us kids was doing trivial shit like that, Doug Tenable was at Nick Studios cooking in the booth. Known for his video game series, Earthworm Jim, a 90s hack and slash platformer that honestly could have rivaled the likes of Sonic and Mario, but just like every platformer that isn't Mario, the game's transformation into the later generations wasn't as graceful as said plumber. Sonic should have met this fate too realistically, but it's insane fan base is all the backing it needs. So after Doug's decline in the video game market, he knew it was time to switch mediums. And since he already had his hand in graphic novels, why not go back to that? And back to that he went, eventually coming up with a new comic book series called Gear by the end of the 90s. And the comic is based on his four real life cats battling dogs with giant robots. It gets pretty grimdark, but what comic wasn't in the 90s? Anyway, let's head back to the mid 2000s where Nick catches wind of this comic and a negotiation was set. Hey, uh, this comic, how about you consider making a wacky cartoon out of this comic? Oh, uh, I'm gonna be honest. I was expecting Adult Swim, MTV, or Comedy Central to approach me about this. But, uh, sure. You plan to air it on Nick at Night or something? Nah, nah. We, we were gonna do it on the main channel. You know, the one the kids watch. Well, uh, my comic isn't exactly for kids. We know. Change it. Oh, yikes. Well, that sounds like a lot of retooling. I don't know if I can. You know what? I'll get right to that. Yeah, we thought so. Hey, yo, George. Make sure SpongeBob comes on before and after his show. I don't want to risk anything. And now we're back to mid-2003, where the production for Doug's other medium in animation was set. Considering that he developed Earthworm and Jim into a cartoon as well, this should be a breeze. So at this point, we're in pre-production of the show, which means it was still called Gear. But Nick slowly started stripping every idea Doug originally had, to which the title then became Fuzz. Mr. Black then became Mr. Blick, they drew him some pupils, Gordon got a rework, Waffle got a rework, Human Kimberly went from this to this. I'm only explaining it that way because I cannot confirm if she's black or not. And last but not least, a whole new concept in general for the show, which is now finally known as Cat Scratch. 
All right, cool. So now we're at the review. Now I like to preface that if you don't like the use of the N word, you're um, you're probably on the wrong channel. Try this one. Oop, wait, he says that too. Alrighty, try this one. Oop, wait, he says that too. Okay, you might as well go here. Oop, wait, he says that. Cat Scratch made his television debut July 9th, 2005, which interesting enough was the day after Camp Leslo premiered too. I would say that these two cartoons competed, but it's pretty obvious on which one lasted longer. It had an all-star cast of Al from Toy Story 2 playing Mr. Blick, Pleakley from Lilo and Stitch playing Waffle, and top five best voice actors in the world, Rob Paulson playing that other fucking cat. Brain from the Animaniacs is the butler. And lastly, Liliana Mumi is voicing Kimberly. And that's pretty much all the cast you need to worry about. I mean, there are some reoccurring characters, but they don't appear enough for me to care. So let's continue. So as far as you people who are unaware are concerned, what do you think a show called Cat Scratch is about? Uh, cat scratching each other? Come on now, don't do that. Do I have to play the intro? Y'all niggas better hope Nickelodeon lets me play this intro. Okay, so what have we learned? An old lady passed away and her senile ass has decided to leave her inheritance to her three newborn cats. Pretty wacky concept. It's a cartoon. No need for overthinking it. However, I'm a cartoon reviewer on the internet. Therefore, I can't help it. Uh, 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 what happened to their mama? Like, you seriously only see her for one frame in one episode and poof, she's gone. Her kids then refer to the old lady as their mom instead. The fact that they even established that they all had the same mom and was born at the same time actually kind of fucked up the series for me. Like, yeah, it was enjoyable to watch, but uh, how do I explain this? It would have made a lot more sense if they just established that the cats were found by Miss Cramdilly instead of them being born in the house. It's an easy change. It would have made the character structures better. You wouldn't have to explain why they don't look the same. Hell, the series could have been better off if this scene never existed in the first place. And I could get less of a damn about the dad. Animals get around all the time. They would cared less about where they throwing that nut. Tangent aside, again, I do realize it's just a fun cartoon, but you'll understand the frustration as we continue. Anyway, these talking cats goes bonkers with this old lady's fortune. There really aren't any stakes, but these dumbasses usually risk their lives and their money when they really don't have to, which is kind of the pull of the series. The plot is to give you the incentive of, what? why are they doing that? And the plot lines for most episodes are, let's go through these trivial things that most people go through. Oh wait, we're rich. Let's fly a rocket to the fucking moon. Well, that isn't every episode, but you get the gist. So let's throw some character traits in there. We have Mr. Blick, the mean maniacal one and self-proclaimed leader of the trio. If he's not going out of his way to win something, he's probably yelling or both. We have Waffle, the dumb one. There's not much to say on his character. Like he really doesn't add anything, but you can tell his primary purpose is comic relief. <laughs> And then we have Gordon Quid, and we could just glance right over those other two cats because this nigga is the true main character of the show. I shit you not, more than 60% of the episodes are based around him, and I only realized this after rewatching the series for this video. Gordon is the only brave character of the show, and also the only one with compassion, which means he's the only redeemable character here. But the reason I have a sour taste in my mouth about him is because he keeps talking about the In the name of the Highland Crit Clan! In the name of the Highland Crit Clan! Oh, and he's Scottish for some reason? However, this joke is later explained after like 20 episodes. In the name of the Highland Crit Clan! Jordan. One, you were born under the couch. Two, you're not from Scotland. And three, there's no such thing as a Highland Crit Clan! That is two. I've got a map right here. I saw you draw that last night. But it doesn't stop it from still leaving that sour taste in my mouth throughout the series. Besides the Scottish gimmick, his character also suffers from an obsessive love sickness for the neighbor character, Human Kimberly. Human isn't her first name, by the way. That's just what they call her. 
Kimberly is as girly as it gets. She loves unicorns, bunnies, unicorns, sleepovers, fuck it, unicorns, you name it. It's pages ripped straight from the book How to Write a Little Girl 90s to Mid 2000s. Every cartoon has had it. And to be honest, wait a minute. Before I continue this sentence, let me clarify that I'm only referring to when I was younger when a show came out. <clears throat> I thought Kimberly was really cute, and I also had a crush on her. Wait, wait, no, don't take that out of context! I don't know, I guess there was something about that gap in her love for root beer that was sending my heart flying at the time. Like, y'all niggas ever met a girl who liked root beer? There's like four of them that exist, I'm sure. But Kimberly as a character is merely just used as a plot device to give Gordon more stuff to do. Same with a newly introduced character named Katilda, who was just there to give Blick something to do. I mean, she only shows up twice, so uh, ship them as hard as you can, nigga. <laughs> the entire show as a whole, though, is pretty entertaining. There's no important story arcs you need to pay attention to, just classic cartoon shenanigans. Like, this is as early 90s as you can make a 2000s cartoon. These cats go from fighting zombies in one episode to dressing up in drag in the next. Cat Scratch isn't a show you binge, however. It's more of a show you wouldn't mind having gone after something else goes off. All right, so for this part of the video, I'm gonna do that thing that Tariq does where he talks about the show's intro just to pat out his videos. So after the cast sings the chorus to the song, the second verse comes in and it's so good on how they flesh this out. Like on this part. Yes, when it comes to cash, they quite a bit. Anything they want, they take the pick. But the trouble they're in just never quits. When it comes to brains, they're a little bit thick. Bro, when it comes to brains, they're a little bit thick. The do, do you not see this? Blick hits his head on the last word. And while the beat is building for the chorus again. Man, if this ain't an intro for the ages, I, I, I don't know what is. I don't, I don't know what is. <laughs> that that Tariq. Uh, how did I do, bro? Can Skillshare sponsor me now? Yo, nigga, don't ever in your life try to holler at me, all right? Fuck with me, nigga. I'll pump the trunk on your bitch ass, nigga. Get my motherfucking Uzi, nigga. I'm telling man on you. Shut up, nigga. Cat Scratch somehow ran for one season with... 20 episodes, two segments each, over the span of two years, what the hell was going on with the show? Well, loosely from all the sources I've been through, all I can simply say is that Nick didn't give a shit about it. Like damn, three other shows after this one premiere got the same treatment as well, and only one of them deserved it. Like sure we can argue that Cat Scratch was mid, but like wh wh why are we creating 40 10 minute segments for one season? Does that shit not sound weird to anyone? What do you mean it's normal? Man, whatever. Cat Scratch ended on February 10, 2007, and it proceeded to make its way to Nicktoons to rerun all the way to 2009. The show only managed to get one episode on a couple of Nick compilation DVDs and an insertion in the DS version of the Nicktoons Attack of the Toybots. But nothing major for themselves, which can easily be blamed by the poor distribution of Nick. But as the years went by, an even deeper hole was dug, pretty much sealing the fate of the series due to the creator's name being on it. And now it's time for the elephant in the room. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but did you know that Tenaple, creator of Earthworm Jim and Cat Scratch is a boomer bigot? Harsh words, I know, but I got the receipts. And I could care less about what a person does outside of their accomplishments. I stand tried and true by saying that I love Cat Scratch, but this still has to be addressed. Doug is a very uncensored man online when it comes to the LGBT community. In this age when you shouldn't say certain things on the internet, he obviously didn't get that concept and said several bad things on the internet that costed him his image. Meaning, if Nick ever decided to re-release Cat Scratch to be consumed in any type of way now, whether it be streaming or merch or mentioning its existence in general, the progressive world will view it as, oh, oh, so we support homophobes now, huh? Which I'm sure that they're trying to avoid, but I'm sure they'll do it anyway five years down the line or so. Shit, I'll take me some HD Cat Scratch right now if I could. The only footage that was able to be restored in decent quality was the German version that the lost media community had to put English audio over. I mean, look at this. What does that say? Cats or nuts? That shit sounds evil as hell. Amen. 